Hello guys, my name is Francis Frimpong, a student nurse from Dunkwa Nursing and Midwifi Training College. I'm here to demonstrate to you a procedure for checking the vital signs of a patient using the aneroid sphygmo manometer or the non degeta sphygmo manometer. And these are the requirements. You need a tray with your drip in it nicely. And then you also need two gallipots, one containing cold water, the other one containing dry cotton wool swab. You also need a breast watch, which you will use to be checking your time for the pulse, the respiration, and then the temperature. You also need your mercury in glass thermometer for checking the temperature of the patient. Also, you need a receiver for your used cotton. And then you also need a pen and paper for documentation of the parameters. Also, you need your hand sanitizer which you'll be using in between the procedure when you get into contact with the patient. Again, you need your sphygmo manometer and then as well, you need your stethoscope. Good morning, sisters here. Please, how are you doing this morning? I'm also fine. My name is Francis Frimpong. I'm a student nurse from Dunkwa Nursing and Midwifi Training College. This morning, I am here to check your vital signs and I'll be checking only four parameters of the vital signs, which are your temperature, your pulse, your respiration, and your blood pressure. The reason for checking these parameters are that it will help us, the nurses, know the appropriate measures to take regarding your health status, whether you are improving or declining. To begin with, I will first clean your armpit with a dry cotton wool swab so that the wetness in your armpit will not have effects on the temperature readings. Afterwards, I will check your pulse rate on your radial artery as well as your respiration cycle in a minute respectively. Lastly, I'll be checking your blood pressure using the BP apparatus and I'll be applying the pressure cuff on your brachium or upper arm. One thing is that the application of the pressure will make you uncomfortable a bit, but I promise to do so in a jiffy. Please, may I have your permission to proceed? Thank you. Just like I told you, I've come with my items. I'm about starting to check your vitals, but I would like to know if you will want to sit or you would like to lie down in bed before I start. You will sit. Thank you. From here, the nurse assists patient to assume a comfortable position for the vital signs to be checked. After that, he washes his hands under running water with soap. Before starting, he takes his mercury in glass one meter and dips it into the cold water for the mercury to submerge. Then dries patient axilla with dry cotton wool to aid in accurate reading of the temperature. He cleans the thermometer from the bulb to the stem and take an eye reading to make sure that the mercury has fallen below 35 degrees Celsius before inserting into the axilla. Then locate the radial artery of the patient on the other arm to read the pulse rate. In reading the pulse rate, the nurse knows three things, the rate, the volume, and the rhythm of the patient. With volume rating from 0 to plus 3, where 0 means absent, plus 1 means weak, plus 2 is normal, and plus 3 means strong. After checking the pulse rate for a minute, he continues to check the respiratory rate of patients by still placing the hands on the radial artery of patients and note the readings for another one minute. When done, he knows the figures down on the paper and pen that he brought. Then by then, it will be almost three minutes to check the reading on the thermometer. He takes it out 
and then wipes it from the stem to the bob with a cotton wool and take an eye reading of the mercury in the glass thermometer. Afterwards, he notes the figure down. And sanitizes his hands before taking the blood pressure readings. In taking the blood pressure readings, both upper limbs are used. However, it is preferably to be taken on the brachium of the left upper arm. Reason can be asked later. In taking the blood pressure reading, the nurse wound the cuff of the sphygmo manometer around the brachium of the left arm of the patient, then starts to inflate pressure whilst placing the fingers on the brachial artery. Here, the brachial artery is being used in checking blood pressure. Frequently, many nurses use the radial artery, but it is preferably to assess it with the brachial artery since it's closer to feel it easily. He inflates the calf until he feels no pulse in the brachial artery, then inserts the stethoscope and places the diaphragm on the brachial artery then releases the pressure slowly until he hears the first sound lump whilst the mercury in the sphygmo manometer will fluctuate then he notes the figure as the systolic bp he will continue to note the readings until the last sound is heard which will be noted as the diastolic reading he would then uncuff patient, neatly reassemble his apparatus, and note the figures down. Stephia, please, would you like to sit or you continue to lie down? I prefer sitting. sitting. All right, okay. Thank you for your cooperation. I'm really grateful. Okay, so sister, if you I'm done checking your vital signs. And the respiration read 36.0 degrees Celsius. The pulse read 61 beats per minute. The respiratory rate was 18 cycles per minute. Your blood pressure was also 170 millimeters per mercury. So comparing the figures, all the parameters are within the normal range. So I'll urge you to continue taking your medications and then continue resting in bed. Everything will be fine and you will be discharged soon. Thank you. Okay, so I'm taking my items and I'm taking them. Okay. 